So what exactly is isolated power, and why does it matter? Now imagine you touch the hot wire of your electrical outlet, but nothing happens. Or let's take a more realistic situation. Let's say that you're working in an operating room, and there's fluids touching the electrically hot part of a medical device. And that fluid is touching a nurse or a clinician or a patient. What's going to happen? Well, under a normal line voltage situation, there would be danger. There would be electrical current flowing through the person. But in an isolated system, that doesn't happen in what we call a single fault condition, a one fault in the electrical circuit. Now, in order to understand isolated electrical systems, it helps to understand traditional electrical power distribution. If you've worked with traditional electrical systems, you've probably had a close call or two with electricity. And if you have a good close call story, I'd like to hear about it in the comment section. So in the US, we typically have electrical systems set up with a neutral, hot, and a ground. Now what a lot of people don't realize is that the neutral and the ground are connected. So practically speaking, what that means is if you take a voltmeter and you measure between the hot and the ground, you're gonna measure 120 volts approximately. And if you measure between the ground and the neutral, you should get a negligible voltage, somewhere usually are in the millivolts range. And if you measure between the hot and the neutral, you should get around 120 volts. So if you put one hand on the hot and one hand on the ground, you're gonna get shocked. And if you put one hand on the neutral and one hand on the ground, you're not gonna feel anything. And if you put one hand on the neutral and one hand on the hot, you're gonna get shocked. Because the ground and the neutral are at the same potential because they're connected, then you don't have to worry about a large difference in potential that can create large currents. Now let's talk about what makes an isolated electrical system different than a traditional system. An isolated electrical system has a steel enclosure, and inside that steel enclosure, you'll find something that looks very similar to the circuit breaker at your house. In addition, there is a line isolation monitor. The monitor detects what the potential leakage current can be. Anything above five milliamps is considered potentially hazardous. Now, just because a line isolation monitor alarms doesn't mean danger is present. It just means there's a potential, there's a hazard, but no one has necessarily been shocked yet. However, the chances have increased. Now, in order to understand isolated power systems, we need to draw the circuit of an isolated power system. So in order to draw our circuit, we gotta start with mains power that's supplied by our line voltage. And you can think of one of these as your hot and one as neutral. Remember neutral is connected to ground. Now in a normal circumstance, if anyone were to touch both the hot and the ground at the same time, you would of course get shocked. And if you touched the neutral and the hot, you'd get shocked. And if you were to touch the neutral on the ground, you would not get shocked because there's no difference of potential between the neutral and the ground when they're connected like this. Now let's take a look at our isolated system. We connect, we get an isolated system by using something called a transformer. And I'm not gonna go into how these transformers are designed because they can be designed differently. Um, and each company has their own sort of nuances to transformer design for isolated systems. Um, but they're all uh, physically separated from line voltage. Okay, that's what the transformer allows us to do. So in an isolated system, there's a physical separation between line voltage and our isolated system. And we'll usually have uh, label line one and line two of our new circuit. And those are connected to our outlets, well, to our breakers and to our outlets. Now, it's important to realize that uh, this transformer isn't a step up or a step down transformer. It is simply allowing us to have a voltage, induced voltage onto this second circuit. If this is my second circuit, this is my first circuit, right? I'm inducing a voltage using electromagnetic induction using the transformer into my new circuit, my second circuit there. Okay, it's also important to realize that there is a ground connection in our isolated system. That ground connection is the ground, right? 
So the key difference here between the, the second circuit and the first circuit is what? The neutral of our mains voltage, is a, it is connected, directly connected to the ground. Where it is in our second circuit, you'll notice line two here, which I forgot to label, is not connected to the ground. All right, so line two or line one, neither one are connected to the ground. They are isolated, they are separate. Now, why is that important? Well, in this system, things function a little differently, right? In the first circuit, neutral and ground are connected. In the second circuit, they're not. So what does that allow me to do? Well, if a person were to touch line two or something that is at the same potential as line two, such as a medical device or other, right? They're absolutely fine because there's no path for current to go through the person. Okay, the, there is no path to a lower potential. So what ends up happening is this isolated system ends up having line two at the same potential as the person, whatever potential they might be at. Okay, because now there's a direct connection. However, there's no path to flow from line two here to line one. So as long as this person is only connected to one part of line two, this would be a what's called a single fault condition, an SFC, then there's no issue. Now there is a absolute potential for hazard and your line isolation monitor is gonna go wild. So where's the line isolation monitor in this? Well, I haven't drawn it yet. So the line isolation monitor we'll put down here. And the line isolation monitor is connected to both line one and line two. And it's grounded. Okay, so the line isolation monitor works a little differently than maybe what you're thinking, but it is basically measuring what is the potential for leakage current to occur. How much leakage current would happen had this been in a more traditional style circuit? So just because you touch line two doesn't mean there's leakage current going through you right now. However, there's going to be a tremendous potential for leakage current to go through you. So the line isolation monitor is going to alarm in this circumstance, um, but you will not be shocked. However, if you were to touch something that is uh, at line potential two with that hand and then touch line one, uh, something at the potential of line one with the other hand, now you are receiving a shock. Uh, so that is what would need to happen in order for electrical shock to occur. You would need to have uh, a two fault condition, right? Two faults both uh, a fault with line one and a fault with line two. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Now let's say uh, something occurs within a device and all of a sudden there is a broken wire or something and the ground connection is touching line two. Somehow th these two get bridged. Okay, once again, we have a single fault condition. The line isolation monitor is going to alarm so there is gonna be a warning of danger. However, there is no danger yet. There is not a, a shock yet. Now, if a person over here were to come and touch line one or something at the potential of line one, right, such as the medical device that has a broken wire or some broken device or something of that nature that allows them to be at the same potential as line one, well, now they are touching line one. Line two has already dropped down to the potential of the ground. So now there's a path from line one through the person, through the ground, so you can complete the circuit, okay? And so this is a two fault condition. The person would receive shock and, you know, obviously the line isolation monitor would have gone off before this. So that's the key. The, the key about the isolated system is it gives you one additional fault that can always occur. You can always be in a single fault condition and be uh, safe and get a warning. Um, by safe, I mean you're not getting shocked at that moment. However, as soon as there's two fault conditions, now there is uh, imminent danger. You will be shocked if you are in the path of the circuit. Of course, there's always the potential that you're not in the path, but something else is in the path, such as a medical device or uh, some other uh, piece of equipment.
Okay, so when you need to troubleshoot these devices, troubleshoot these systems, what do you do? Well, you need to be familiar with how they work, um, but typically, fundamentally, what you're trying to do is isolate the issue. What is the problem? Right, so figure out what piece of equipment or what groups of equipment are causing issues. So you can do this by unplugging devices, figuring out what device is causing the line isolation monitor to go off. Right? Now you want to get that line isolation monitor, that potential leakage current, to get below less than 5 milliamps. And that's defined due to the effects on the human body as leakage current goes above 5 milliamps. That's why that's defined there. It's the same as or similar to what a GFCI is set at. Ground fault circuit interrupter is set at to go off, to switch off at 5 milliamps. The reason that line isolation systems don't switch off at 5 milliamps, I mean, that would be really bad if you lost power in a surgical room or something of that nature. So they don't switch off automatically, which is good. That's why you use isolated systems, not GFCIs. But ultimately what you want to do is isolate the equipment or the pieces of equipment and then figure out what's causing it. It could be that there's damage to the device. Okay, look for damage, do a physical inspection. It could be that uh, the way those devices interact um, due to the multiple leads or connections, there's some way the excess leakage current is developing. Um, and, and there's multiple reasons that that could be happening. You, you gotta, there's no hard cut solution, but at least you can figure out what the problem makers are, what medical devices are giving you issues, isolate them and know that that's the problem and see if you can replace the device, distance the troublemakers, the multiple devices that are, that are interacting in such a way as to cause a problem. I hope that explanation was helpful. There's so much more I could talk about, about line isolated systems and maybe I'll do another video. Um, if I missed anything critical, please mention it in the comments and I hope that video helped you learn more about isolated electrical systems.